Well, I would like to, we, we do have a question in the chat here. Um, what are the critical raw materials in your manufacturing process and how do you secure the supply chain for these? Mm -hmm. I think that's a, an important question. Maybe Hari, you wanna tackle this because I know you were talking about trying to transition, thinking about the materials you're using right at the earliest stages into the, into the later stages. So you're not uh, having to start over, right? In terms of quality. So. Would you like to take a stab at this one? And, and John, if you have additional thoughts, please feel free sure. to add. Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, I think um, for those of you who are not familiar with mRNA manufacturing, you know, you need to have a, a DNA template uh, typically to manufacture the RNA. And so that becomes a critical uh, raw material. Um, uh, in addition to uh, the DNA template, uh, you need uh, the the uh, nucleotides, the individual nucleotides, uh, as well as the enzymes uh, uh, necessary. Uh, and uh, people do capping a couple different ways. And, and, and so depending on how you cap it, uh, you need uh, the appropriate reagents for those. Um, I think, you know, at this point in 2023, uh, the supply chain for all of these is um, is being invested in quite heavily. Uh, much different than how it was several years ago. Um, Great to hear. Uh, <laughs> it's very good to yeah, hear. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, having said that, uh, you know, plasmid manufacturing still continues to be uh, uh, a, a tight spot uh, because of the heavy demand for plasmids, not just in mRNA manufacturing, but also in uh, gene therapy and cell therapies. And so uh, all roads uh, have to go through uh, DNA manufacturing. Um, even there, there's quite a bit of capacity build out that is happening. Uh, so uh, in the future, we should see uh, much less restrictive supply chains for that. Uh, but that kind of covers uh, some of the major ones. Yeah. We, we are not talking delivery. That's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and there's supply chains associated with that. But uh, that's uh, for another day, I suppose. Uh, mm -hmm. But that, yeah, that summarizes uh, what, what I mm -hmm. think are the key raw materials and, and how we secure uh, our uh, how secure the supply chain is. I think I yeah. think it's it's going to get better and better over time. Yeah, yeah. John, would you agree with that that assessment as well? Are you seeing the same things in terms yeah, of I, quality and availability growing I, up? I, I, I am. Yeah, I think yeah. there's I think some spaces as an example um, where frankly there's single source uh, yeah. uh, limited opportunities to be honest, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. but frankly the supply chain challenges I think of the past uh, you know have, have not completely resolved themselves mm -hmm. but certainly have made things yeah. a bit easier I think you know, when I look at you know plasmid uh, you know, we do a PCR amplification process so the DNA template is something we do in-house right so mm -hmm. what we try to do is you know where, where it makes sense we you know we pull in some internal manufacturing capabilities right to supplement areas where perhaps there's some challenges but I, I agree with Harry with uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. those are the primary areas. I think one other place opportunity to consider as well, which again, I think has uh, significantly improved is when you're looking at um, single use components. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yep. um, that, that was a challenge over the last several years. Um, and particularly if you're looking at, you know, customized materials, that's always something else to keep an eye out for as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah.